What's up guys, Blitz here today bringing you another video. In today's video, we have a new interview with Nomura that came out yesterday from PlayStation Blog. This interview talks more about Yuffie's DLC, Integrate as a whole, and also murders and destroys and buries a rumor that people have been talking about since the release of the final trailer. You know it's starting to feel like every week on a Tuesday we've been getting more and more Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate news. And I really need to start anticipating this a little bit more and be more prepared. Shout out to you guys for joining the PlayStation 5 giveaway. The giveaway ends June 7th, so make sure that you get that membership in for YouTube. And also get your entire entries in via the Gleam link in the comments below. Some lucky person is going to be getting their hands on this PlayStation 5 soon, and you don't want to miss out on that being you. So join the giveaway below right now and increase your chances of winning by becoming a member on YouTube because members get plus 5 entries to the giveaway. And also shout out to Schrodinger's Baby Seal for hooking me up with this information and letting me know that this article exists very, very early, dude. I really appreciate that. Be sure to subscribe to his channel and check out his Twitch page as well. Seal Team 7 is your best spot for all theories related to Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Trust me, you're doing yourself a disservice by not being subscribed to that man. So go ahead and fix that right now. Now with all that being said, let's get into this video. The interviewer asked Nomura, could you discuss Yuffie's design for the remake and what were you trying to accomplish? Nomura says, I would say I was most particular about whether or not she looked her age. Yuffie is younger than other main members and she is still in her teens. While Cloud and the company do have youthful looking faces, I wanted to make Yuffie look even younger and not fully grown up. So that compared to her, Cloud and crew look much more mature to an extent. Hearing this definitely puts to bed that idea that they'll increase Yuffie's age in Remake, because in the original Final Fantasy VII, she was only 16 years old. Then in Advent Children, she is 18 years old. And then in Dirge of Cerberus, she's finally 19. They went the extra mile, it seems, to keep her design towards more looking like a teenager, which is really dope for consistency in my opinion. In the original game, Yuffie didn't really have much depth to her character, and she kind of really annoyed me <laughs> but with all the other characters being so well done in remake i can only imagine they'll make me fall in love with her attitude and character so before we move on to the next question a very interesting video is actually shown on the website of yuffie walking around the slums in the very first slide which is also very brief she seems to be walking by a reunion numbered clone this dude is casually on his way to attend sephiroth's wap ceremony you know worship and prayer specifically to Genova, right? And Yuffie most likely makes fun of him and they exchange some dialogue is what I'm imagining. It's very interesting that they decided to have him just chilling out in the open when we've only ever seen these guys before in just cutscenes. Maybe they require too much memory that the PlayStation 4 could not just handle. Who knows? <laughs> Up next, the interviewer says, We saw Vice and a homage to the Moogle outfit from Dirge of Cerberus Final Fantasy VII, but were there any other details about Yuffie being pulled in from expanded Final Fantasy VII media? Nomura says, I wasn't necessarily aiming to pay homage, but I did want Yuffie to appear in a disguise at first. I had recalled that she was dressed like that in Dirge of Cerberus, so I gave her a similar look here. Same goes for Vice. I chose him because he's a powerful enemy outside of Sephiroth. The interviewer then asked, do you recall your headspace and emotions when designing Yuffie in the original Final Fantasy VII? What were your thoughts then, and how has your perspective of her changed over time? Nomura says, at the time of the original and even now, my perspective of her has not changed very significantly. Yuffie is an energetic and straightforward character. That being said, as this episode is centered around her, I believe we will also be able to depict her sensitive side. That segment right there, I actually enjoyed reading. Anyone who has played the original Final Fantasy VII can tell you that since Vincent and Yuffie were side characters that were also missable, they didn't have much for them to do in the main story. <laughs> well, there is Yuffie's Wutai arc, but her character development to me is just a bit, eh, you know, and... Exploring more of her sensitive side is a major thing in Remake that they're doing, judging from the scene we got in the last trailer, I mean... <laughs> It doesn't really get much more sensitive than that, you know what I mean? But this also means that we will see a Yuffie who starts off annoying, but she will grow from those experiences. And we, the players, in turn, will grow from those experiences as well. The interviewer then says, Since the original's release, we saw Yuffie's design change in Advent Children and Dirge of Cerberus. But how do you come up with your designs in particular? Nomura says, I generally try not to change her silhouette, but to match her signature elements, such as her shorts, as close to the original, as I can. The interviewer then says, Yuffie's massive shuriken is iconic. When we imagine a ninja, we picture various weapons like a kunai or a small katana. But what made you choose the shuriken? 
Nomura says the reason for that is because out of all the weapons that the ninja job could wield in Final Fantasy titles that were released before Final Fantasy VII, the shuriken was especially powerful. Honestly, the shuriken makes a lot of sense as in a lot of other Final Fantasies, whenever a ninja character is introduced, we get access to various ninja items and weapons. However, the shuriken has usually been the most consistent and best weapon or item of choice for them in their respective games. The interviewer next says, Yuffie is very mischievous in the original Final Fantasy VII from a personality perspective. How does this approach to her character vary from the original game? Nomura says, when considering Yuffie in a large group, you can't help but notice how energetic she is. But I also think that she's also a character whose inner workings become more visible as you get closer to it. In this episode, you will mainly be following Yuffie and a new character, her partner Sonon. So I believe that you'll be able to get closer to Yuffie than usual. And there we go again, Nomura is basically telling us that we're going to be seeing more depth to the character Yuffie than we've seen ever before. This is all thanks to the character's interactions and the things that she will experience along the way of her journey. Maybe we will learn a little bit more a bit earlier on about why she is the way that she is. I mean, it's simple from longtime fans' perspective. Her country Wutai has been oppressed and punished by Shinra, taking away their materia and turning them into no more of a tourist attraction, which brings Yuffie and her family dishonor as I'm sure it does to any other Wutai residents as well. When she meets up with Avalanche, I'm sure we'll get a full dose of explanations for Wutai, her family, and everything regarding that. And the final question of this interview, which is a big one in the sense that it puts to bed that rumor of another character appearing inside of this DLC episode. The interviewer asks, how did the team decide to bring Yuffie as the main character in this DLC instead of Vincent or Sid? Nomura says the overarching story follows the original, so considering where this lies in the storyline, Vincent is still in his slumber and Sid is still on Shinra's side, so Yuffie was the only one who would be able to move around freely. Nomura full on confirms that Vincent is still in his sleep far away and we will not be seeing him in this storyline since it's very early to showcase him so soon. Same thing essentially with Sid. Sid is also still technically working with Shinra at this moment with their space program too. If you remember, Palmer is the head of the space department, so seeing Palmer and Sid actually interact and remake when we finally get to see Sid is going to be something much better and I guarantee you that from the original game, you know, with Palmer basically being a slob and asking for extra lard in his tea for some reason. I really hope we don't get more remake news weekly dropped like this because at this point it's getting so close to the game finally being here for us to play that I worry that Square will just flat out throw out all the information that would have been nice for us to discover on our own. I mean, I do hate that they did kind of showcase a reunion cloaked clone is going to probably appear and have some dialogue, but it's very interesting that they would even showcase that footage specifically because he's pretty much in plain sight. One thing we have yet to see in any of the trailers though, but almost will definitely appear, are the whispers. We still don't see any of the whispers in any of Yuffie's interactions of her trailers, which sort of lays to claim that whatever Yuffie is doing is all part of what happened in the original game storyline. Because if you remember, the whispers show up whenever a big story change is coming up, like Cloud trying to full on execute Reno. They allowed Cloud to fight Reno, which also did not happen in the original game, but when Cloud was trying to actually kill Reno, they full on intervened to prevent this. That's the case for all of their interactions. The whispers only show up when something serious that affects a major plot point is coming up. And Reno is pretty important to the, you know, plate falling <laughs> and other stuff after that too. It kind of makes you wonder all about the ending of Remake and when the whispers are all covering up Shinra's building, maybe they full on are trying to stop Yuffie or something else in the building from changing up something else that is huge. And maybe that's the first time we see them in her storyline, which I also highly doubt. It'll be really awesome to see if maybe the Whispers never showcase themselves in Yuffie's storyline because she cannot see them. But they full on affect things and we can still see subtle hints that they are around. But this is also only visible to the player. What do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments below. And that wraps it up for this video, guys. The PlayStation 5 giveaway is underway. Make sure you guys have joined and become members and get those entries in for the giveaway. It is ending on June 7th and the winner will be announced then too. I'm also hella excited and looking forward to seeing who wins. So do yourself a favor and join the giveaway right now, guys. And don't miss out on a chance to secure a PlayStation 5 so you can finally play Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade on release. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you are new. More Final Fantasy VII Remake videos are coming your way and you won't want to miss them. My name is Blitz and thanks for watching.